Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Retro Tech Bytes. Today, I wanted to talk about 3D accelerators, specifically not the one in front of you. The one in front of you is the iconic 3DFX Voodoo. It is certainly a capable card and quite a fast card, and it's well known for its proprietary API, Glide. The 3DFX Voodoo 1 isn't the only card that could run Glide games, certainly not. This is a 3DFX Voodoo Rush, which was another option at the time. It allowed for 2D and 3D on the same card instead of requiring the special pass-through that the original Voodoo required. And it was a semi-compelling option, but again, it's not what I'm here to talk about today. This is the card that I wanted to talk to you about today. This is the Diamond Stealth 2 S220. It had a Rendition Verity V2100 and four megs of SG RAM. It was clocked at 40 megahertz on the core and 80 megahertz on the RAM and had a 32-bit data path. Unfortunately, these clock speeds were somewhat, well, low and performance was lacking. Later revisions of the card were updated to a later BIOS that had a 55 and 111 megahertz core and memory speed. This BIOS is actually available for earlier cards and they can be upgraded just as I did with mine. Stealth 2 marked Rendition's entry into what is an early series of 3D accelerators, including the number nine Ticket to Ride, the NVIDIA Revo 128, and the 3DFX Voodoo Rush. Due to delays, this card entered the market in late 1997, but it still marked an entry into the era of early Direct3D and other 3D accelerated games, including OpenGL games, Glide games, and, well, in Rendition's case, Redline games. In 1997, reviewers, like most average end users, thought that 3D would be the way of the future. Unfortunately, 3D wasn't exactly accessible to most people. 3D effects of Voodoo's were quite expensive and unobtainable, just like modern 3D accelerators are, and the average 3D accelerator itself could cost anywhere between $180 to $230, at least for a lower end chip. Getting into higher end chips like the Voodoo 2 when that came around, well, forget about it. The thing is, Rendition decided to target an area of the market that would naturally appeal to people who wanted 3D but couldn't afford the upper end accelerators. Approaching the entry level but promising higher level performance, the Rendition Verity V2100 seemed poised for success in its Diamond Stealth S220 form. While some may write off the Diamond Stealth 2 S220 for its lower capabilities, take a look at the price of a Voodoo 2 comparatively. A Diamond Stealth 2 S220? $53, a Voodoo 2, anywhere between $157 and a whopping $207. In an era where 3D acceleration was all the rage, the Stealth 2 S220 offered an opportunity for consumers on a budget to be able to upgrade to 3D acceleration. Take a look at this issue of Maximum PC. They're able to replace a Diamond Viper with a Diamond Stealth 2 S220 and add 3D acceleration to a much older system. Reviewers lauded the Stealth 2 S220 as the answer where 3DFX wasn't. It was cheap, it was fast, and it was great in 3D. Now, interestingly, the 2D tests were subpar, but the magazine itself here noted that 3D, well, it was one of the fastest 3D cards that they had tested. Here I have a Pentium 2 LX board based test bench. It has a Pentium 2 at 333 megahertz and 384 megabytes of RAM. For networking, I have a Realtek PCI network card installed. It's nothing special, just an RTL 8139. And for sound, I'm using an Ariel Vortex 1. Um, I have on it a Dream Blaster S2 daughter board. It's a great card, it provides Sound Blaster Pro emulation, and it's good for direct sound and general MIDI. It does also include basic A3D 1.0, so it's pretty good for spatial sound too. That being said, the real star of the show is the Diamond Stealth 2 S220. And well, let's give it a go, shall we?
One thing I had terrible issues with was the rendition drivers. After unsuccessfully trying the Diamond Stealth 2 S220 drivers, I switched to the rendition base drivers, the reference drivers, will you? The reference drivers from the oldest batch, version 2.03, happen to run the best, at least for compatibility's sake. And their OpenGL implementation is basically broken, and their DirectX compatibility isn't great. It really just depends. I had a bear of a time setting up the card because the drivers are all, you know, alpha or beta versions for the most part, but the reference drivers seem to work the best and provide the least amount of fuss, at least for me. The only other thing to really note is that the drivers still have kind of a weird window, which you'll see when I boot up the system and go into advanced properties. For some reason, there's actually two Verity configurations instead of one. I couldn't figure it out, and it wasn't like I had a previous version of the drivers installed. So I'm not exactly sure what was up there, but these drivers just really aren't great. They do work for games, however, so I'm not saying that they're completely broken. First up is a classic, VQuake, which was actually designed for the Rendition Verity and only runs on the Rendition Verity cards. It's sort of a advanced version of Quake that uses a hybrid software renderer with some Verity enhancements and provides actually some interesting features like anti-aliasing and the ability to render triangles in the card itself. What exactly does that mean? Well, uh, if you're rendering the triangles in the card itself, it means your performance is going to be higher. Note, this is actually something that even Voodoo cards didn't do. They still use the CPU for triangle setup. Another really cool feature of Verity is the ability to do water distortion effects. Note that only VQuake actually has effects that are this advanced. Additionally, take a look at the textures. If you've seen Software Quake before, you'll notice that these textures are a lot smoother and a lot more developed. The colors seem better, the mip mapping is better, and frankly, the game just actually looks better than even GL Quake. It's not dull, it's got a really nice color palette, and it plays great. Now here's the big one, Quake 2. There actually was a Verity version of Quake 2, however it was a beta. First I'm going to show you some of software Quake 2 so you can establish a baseline of how it works on the system. And note this is running in 640 by 480 After this I'm going to show you Verity Quake in 800 by 600 It's not particularly awful. I mean, we have a perfectly capable system. However, we can definitely do better. We can increase the frame rate and the resolution, and we can get anti-aliasing. Why? The Rendition Verity Span Alpha Renderer.
There were a handful of other games that supported the Verity at launch. Unfortunately, there aren't too many. Next up, I'm going to show you MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries, as well as Die by the Sword and Grand Prix Legends, all three of which had support for the rendition Verity at launch. Note that these games run pretty dang well on here, but they don't really do anything too spectacular with the card itself like V-Quake and V-Quake 2 did. Certainly it looks nice and it plays well, but that's about it. External camera. What better game to test the OpenGL and DirectX capabilities of the rendition Verity than Half-Life? Half-Life is a classic. It's one of the best first-person shooters. It is a 1997 classic, and it's demanding as heck. In fact, the game actually doesn't run on these old drivers, at least in OpenGL mode. The issue is, well, those drivers didn't have a good OpenGL implementation. So what I did is I went ahead and upgraded the system to the newer 3.0 Beta 5 drivers and worked fine. After that, I was able to get OpenGL and DirectX. Thing is, the OpenGL implementation is so bad on this card that some of the textures just look completely off. It has to do with how the hardware the card renders certain textures, but either way, it certainly runs the game pretty well. In Direct3D mode, the performance is better, but certainly not great. Either way, the card's able to run Half-Life, but I wouldn't exactly call it enjoyable. Come take a look for yourself. Note that after this, I'm also going to put up some direct 3D footage. For your convenience, I've labeled which is running on OpenGL and which is being rendered on direct 3D. It's provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. The time is 8.47 a.m. Current topside temperature is 93 degrees, with Fellow an estimated scientists. high of 105. The Black Mesa compound is maintained at a pleasant 68 degrees at all times. This train is inbound from level 3 dormitories to... Sector C destination is a hot security. Beyond Sector C, 
You will need to return to the central transit hub in Area 9 and board a high security train. If you have not yet submitted your identity to the retinal clearance system, you must report to Black Mesa personnel for processing before you will be permitted into the high security branch of the transit system. Mesa compound. No smoking, eating, or drinking are permitted within the Black Mesa transit system. Please keep your limbs inside the train at all times. Do not attempt to open the doors until the train has come to a complete halt at the station platform. In the event of an emergency, passengers are to remain safe. rails and proceed to an emergency station until assistance arrives. this evening at 1900 hours in the level 3 facility. The semi-finals for high security workers will be announced in a separate secure access transmission. More lives than your own may depend on your fitness. Do you have a friend or relative who would make a valuable addition to the Black Mesa team? Immediate openings are available in the areas of materials handling. personnel. Regular radiation and biohazard screenings are a requirement of continued employment in the Black Mesa Research Facility. Missing a scheduled urinalysis or radiation checkup is grounds for immediate termination. If you feel you have been exposed to radioactive or other hazardous materials in the course of your duties, contact the radiation safety officer Work safe. Work smart. Your future depends on it. Now arriving at Sector C test labs and control facilities. Please stand back from the automated door and wait for the security officer to verify your identity. Before exiting the train, be sure to check your area for personal belongings. Thank you, and have a very safe and productive day. Good morning, Mr. Freeman. Looks like you're running late. So, is the Diamond Stealth 2 S220 good card? In some respects, yes. 
It's quite unique. It has excellent capabilities for anti-aliasing, which even the 3D effects Voodoo couldn't do, but it's still constrained by its status as a lower budget card. It only has four megabytes of texture RAM. Its OpenGL performance isn't great. It has a bunch of driver problems, but that's not to say it's a bad card. It has excellent direct 3D implementation. Is it unfairly maligned as trying to be a Voodoo, but not a Voodoo? Probably. I think that there's some grounds to say that it's an excellent card that was sort of lambasted for not being its competitor. That being said, not everything can have the magic of a Voodoo, but the rendition, well, it brings its own breed of magic. It's a cool card. It's unique, it's fun, and it's great for Quake and Quake 2. That being said, if those are the only games you want to play, I can recommend it wholeheartedly for that. If you want to play games like Half-Life, there's better 3D renderers out here. This is a Pentium 2 333 MHz. It shouldn't be struggling with Half-Life. It is because the card's texture RAM is just insufficient. That being said, overall it's still a compelling package because it's unique and it was one of the few early 3D accelerators to really take it to the competition and it really sort of upended 3D effects's grasp on the market because it provided a cheaper alternative. For 50 bucks you could have a card that ran Half-Life. You could have a card that ran a special version of Quake. You could have a card that did anti-aliasing. You could have a card that was genuinely fast in 3D at a time when a 3D accelerator was a luxury. That is what the Diamond Stealth 2 S220 got you. Once again, thank you for your support and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Why do we all have to wear these ridiculous tops?